Is human sexuality hedonistic by nature? Is our essiwul, and from this point forward, I will say essiwul in order not to trigger any algorithms, but is our essiwul appetite more animalistic, more primal, more ravenous than we would like to admit? Because there are things called social constructs, morals, social caps, and these things often cover and disguise our true nature as humans because we do have these hedonistic tendencies which do get covered every now and then because societies are cyclical. We do have our hedonistic times and we have our more socially constricted times. This is a Tarek Talks Midnight Podcast. Sit down, relax, and enjoy. Have you ever asked yourself, how is the true human essual appetite? Because let's face it, due to social norms and social constructs such as monogamy, religion, politics, and other norms, or other caps or constructs, we would like to think we are more moral than we really are. Because what separates us from your common ape, and some scientists have alluded to us evolving from apes. This is neither here or there. This is not a morality discussion or a religious discussion. It is just a philosophical piece. With that being said, that's neither here or there. But we have more intelligence than your average ape or even your average dolphin, which is extremely intelligent uh, in itself. Those creatures are extremely intelligent. But we have the neocortex, which is responsible. And scientists still don't fully understand the human brain. But what we do know is... Our neocortex is responsible for things such as logic, such as language, and possibly even morals. So we do have this aspect that separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom and puts us at the top of the food chain. Now, with that being said, if you were to strip away the laws, if you were to strip away morals and social constructs, how would humans really act and we have seen glimpses of this throughout history such as the greek culture many many years ago millennia ago the greek culture was extremely hedonistic even though they did have their sets of morals and they had a moral compass so to speak but when it came to their sexuality it was very out in the open they participated in things such as group intimate activities and same gender activities as well. So we did see little times of hedonism. And if you think way back in our first maybe millions of people to roam the earth, otherwise known as our early ancestors, the very first people to roam this earth, how did they act? I am pretty sure because they we only can assume what they did, right? Scientists have only been able to, to discover fossils and carbon dated bones and only they can only speculate of how they were socially. But we can probably all agree that they were as close to our true nature as possible. And this brings up the question that as I alluded to earlier, without religion, without these social norms, without these social constructs, are we really as essentially moral as we would like to think? Because we will never know. People just walking out in society will never know other another person's true essential fantasies, their true essential desires their hedonistic part. And if you don't know what hedonistic means, hedonistic basically means very pleasure-based, very desire-based, extremely carnal. There's nothing logical about it. 
Okay. And people by nature, if you dig deep, are very hedonistic by nature, but they, you will never know with some people because they keep it hidden deep down, whether it is because of religion, religion might be the most strongest case for this. But even then, these same people that are extremely religious or have extreme moral high grounds behind closed doors, they do perform their hedonistic. They do perform their true carnal passions behind closed doors and privacy. And there are subcultures of these type of people that are very hedonistic. There is many societies whole underground societies that perform in hedonism and i believe that if it wasn't for social norms and social constructs the numbers of these underground societies will be ever increasing take this for an example you are in a gym and there's a young lady in the gym she is lifting weights and she is looking at the men in the gym because you better believe that young ladies do look at men in the gym. They're just a little more discreet. And this young lady is observing these men. One particular man catches her eye. He's working out. He is going into a heavy sweat. His muscles are pumped from the workout. Now, this young lady even though she might be very morally adept or she might have a very high moral background or maybe she follows social norms, right? Because you have to be ladylike, so to speak. No matter how much of a moral compass she has, deep down in the recesses of her mind, she is having fantasies about this young man. She, as a matter of fact, she might be having fantasies about multiple men in that same gym. She might have seen multiple men that look attractive to her on a primal, carnal, hedonistic level. And these fantasies would be very shocking if they were to be displayed out in the open. Now, this young lady, and this is just an example this is not something that is just set in stone. It is just an example. Now, this young lady, even though in, in social settings and a moral compass standpoint or a moral standpoint, I should say, she would never say this out in public. But in private, when there's no one around and when she sees a man that is equally as hedonistic, she might be playing out those very same fantasies behind closed doors. Or when she sees multiple men that are hedonistic, she might be involved in multiple person activities behind closed doors. Same thing with men. I'm pretty sure, and this is, I'm talking for myself as well. I'm pretty sure many men have fantasized about a multiple woman interaction. I know I have. And this is something that I would think about in the deep recesses of my mind. I would think that, hey, it would be, I would like to be with two women at one time. I would like to have a threesome with these young ladies. And these are just hedonistic thoughts that everyone thinks, all right? Every young lady has had fantasies and desires, which would be considered taboo, which would be frowned upon especially by her social circle, especially if they are somewhat more of a morally high ground group of individuals. But even with these social constructs, even with these norms, even with all of these logical and social contracts that we have, humans still have these thoughts in the back of their mind and you can't they can't stop it they can't help it and that begs to differ that 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 begs to bring up the question 
are we truly as monogamous and are we truly as essentially moral as we would like to think or is our appetite much more ravenous are we truly these uh these people sitting on this mountain top of morality or is our desire no different than an ape so these are just some things to ponder about let me know what you guys thought